Welcome to the Vonage Business Communications Desktop App Tutorial for End Users. The Vonage Business Communications, or VBC, Desktop App is a free cloud desktop software that allows you to use and control your Vonage Business phone service from your personal computer. You can place and receive calls with Desktop App, send and receive text messages with Vonage Flow, show your customer contact history, control call forwarding settings, and listen to voicemails. To skip to a particular section or topic, simply click on one of the featured links. Let's get started. To log in, open a browser and go to the following URL. When you are added to a Vonage Business Communications account, as an end user, you will receive an email with a username and a link to set up your password. For your password to be successful, it must meet the following requirements must be different from any of the previous five passwords, contain between 8 and 50 characters, contain an uppercase character, contain a lowercase character, contain a number, for example, 7, and contain a special character, for example, a dollar sign. If you have already created your password and are returning to the portal, you need only to enter your username and password and select Login. Once you are logged in, you'll be asked to download the desktop app. This download is required to place or receive calls on your personal computer. To start the download process, click on the Download button. Follow the on-screen instructions to install. Once installed, you'll be asked to log in. This will be the same username and password you used previously. Upon logging in, you'll see the Desktop Connect dashboard with the calls being the first page you see. Let's take a look around the dashboard to familiarize yourself with the app. Here are your profile avatar and quick start menu. From here, you can place a new call, send a message, create a group, start a meeting, or send the original fax. Just below this is your navigation panel. These tabs will take you to the various pages of the Desktop Connect app. The main area is where all the information is loaded and corresponds to the page selected in the navigation. For instance, the Calls page will have a different work area than your voicemail or SMS pages. We will take a closer look at some of these items in the following videos. On the left side of the dashboard, you'll see your Connect avatar displaying your initials. This is Desktop Connect's Quick Menu. To access this menu, click your avatar, and the menu window will appear. Let's take a look at the core menu options as they arise. First and foremost, your personal information is displayed, that being your name and extension number. When extended, this area shows your extension. If more than one is assigned, direct dial numbers and your virtual receptionist's numbers. Next, you must have the ability to mute all devices. This disables inbound calls to all of your extension-related devices, as well as disables all notifications. To enable this option, click on the Toggle button. You can also disable notifications. This, as stated, will disable notifications, but will still allow calls to ring your extension or phone number. To enable this option, click on the Toggle button. Lastly, you may disable calls for the Desktop Connect client. When this option is enabled, all incoming calls will no longer ring the Desktop Connect app, but will ring other devices associated with your number or extension. To enable this option, click on the Toggle button. Your settings are broken down into the following sections. Profile. Here you can see and edit your contact information, username, password, and security questions. Application. Here you have access to Call Settings, where you can customize your call screen and dial pad options. Messaging settings, where you can set the default number for sending messages, as well as setting which numbers you wish to use with Business Inbox. And notifications, where you can set sound and browser alert preferences. Audio. Here you can choose the speakers and microphone you want to utilize. You can also pick the device to play the incoming ringtone. Extension. Here you can view extension details and update the following. Call continuity service detects the loss of telephone connection, and then automatically directs calls to a designated backup number. To enable this feature, 
enter a valid 10-digit number in the Enter a Backup Number field. Click Save when complete. 7-digit dialing allows you to assign a default area code, so you only have to dial the last 7 digits of the number. To enable this option, enter the area code within the Enter an Area Code field. Click Save when finished. Call Screening plays the caller recorded name and allows you the option on how to direct the call. To enable this function, click on the checkbox. Click Save when finished. Call Announce plays the custom tag from the department of which the call is from. To enable this function, click on the checkbox. Click Save when finished. Screening Menu plays call handling options such as press 1 to accept the call, press 2 to send the caller to voicemail, press 3 to transfer the call by number, and so forth. To enable this function, click on the checkbox. Click Save when finished. Call blocking allows you to create rules to block inbound and outbound calls. Call forwarding. This allows you to choose how to direct calls when you're not available in one of the following ways. Send to voicemail. This enables your call to be sent directly to your voicemail if there is no answer after a certain period of time. To enable this feature, click the radio box and choose the length of time from the drop-down menu. Click Save when complete. Forward All Calls. This allows you to forward all calls to an outside number or an internal extension. Most of the time, your mobile phone is the forwarded device. To enable this feature, click on the radio box. From the drop-down menu, you can either input a 10-digit number or select from the list of users associated with your account. Once this is complete, proceed to select the caller ID to use. This is usually the default originating number option. Click Save when finished. Follow Me allows you to direct incoming calls to ring up to five numbers in a sequence for a duration that you specify. To enable this feature, click on the radio box. From the drop-down menu, you can either input a 10-digit number or select from the list of users associated with your account. Then select the duration period. Repeat this step up to five times. Once this is complete, proceed to step two, where you provide the no answer number. The default option is usually the best as this is your extension. Finally, select the caller ID to use. This is typically the default originating number option. Click Save when complete. Simultaneous Ring. This allows you to ring multiple devices at once. To enable this feature, click on the radio box. From the drop-down menu, you can either input a 10-digit number or select from the list of users associated with your account. Repeat this step up to five times as applicable. Once this is complete, proceed to step two, where you provide the length of time it will ring before going to voicemail. Finally, select the caller ID to use. This is usually the default originating number option. Click Save when complete. Device. Here you can manually manage, set up, and provision your desk phone or third-party soft phone. You may configure up to three devices. Voicemail. Here you can view and update your PIN and email options. Select greeting and exiting options. Web Launcher. Allows you to open a website when a call is initiated. You can determine which website opens and can insert certain dynamic information about the call into the URL. To enable this option, enter the display title and URL address here. When finished, click the Add button. This will place the URL within the URL to launch table. Proceed to select when you want the URL to launch, either on incoming calls or outgoing calls. On the left side, click your avatar. Currently, it will house your initials. To upload a picture of yourself, from the quick menu click on Settings. Your profile settings page will appear. Scroll down to Profile Picture and click on your avatar. When the window appears, click on Upload and select the image you wish to use from your computer. When finished, click Open. Center your picture and click Save. Your avatar will now be set with your picture. The dial pad can be found at the bottom of the navigation panel. To access the dial pad, click on the dial pad icon. The dial pad window appears. The dial pad is where you can place calls by dialing the valid extension or 10-digit number. Here you can also access your directory by clicking the icon here. The dial pad disappears and is replaced with your contact list.
You can either search for a contact or locate it manually from the list below. To exit directly, click on the dial pad icon. Upon sign in, the calls page will be the first call you see. The calls page is broken into two distinctive areas. The first area being your call log window. Here you can view all incoming and outgoing calls as well as missed calls. The second section of the call page houses all the caller information. This page will change depending on the caller you select and show all the available data for the said caller. To place a call from the call page, click on the new call button. The dial pad window will appear. Enter a valid extension or 10-digit number and click the Dial button. The call will now be placed and show at the top of the dashboard screen. You can also place a call from your company's directory. To do this, click on the New Call button to make the Dial Pad window appear. Proceed to click on the directory icon here. The Dial Pad disappears and is replaced with your contact list. You can either search for a contact with the search field or locate it manually from the list below. Once the contact is found, Hover over their name and click on the phone icon to complete the call. To end a call, click the End icon. This will disconnect the current active call. There are three different types of transfers you can use within this application. These include Blind Transfer, Attended Transfer, and Direct to Voicemail Transfer. A blind or unannounced transfer takes place when you transfer a call to someone else without announcing the call first. To conduct a blind transfer while on an active call, hover over the transfer button and select Blind Transfer. From the contact panel, enter the number or extension you wish to transfer to. The blind transfer confirmation box will appear. Click OK to complete the transfer or Cancel to go back. A consulted or attended transfer is performed when you announce the call to the recipient prior to transferring the call. To conduct an attended transfer while on a call, hover over the transfer button and select Attended Transfer. From the contact panel, enter the name or extension you wish to transfer to. The Attended Transfer confirmation box will appear. Click OK to initiate the attended transfer. The current call will automatically be placed on hold after clicking OK. Once the party answers and you've introduced the call, click the Pulsing Transfer button to complete the transfer. A direct to voicemail transfer is performed when you wish to transfer a call directly to another user's voicemail. To conduct a transfer to voicemail while on an active call, hover over the transfer button and select Transfer to Voicemail. From the contact panel, select the recipient you wish to transfer to and the Transfer to Voicemail confirmation box will appear. Click OK to complete the transfer to voicemail or click Cancel to go back. To park an active call, click the Park icon. The Call Park confirmation window will appear containing the Call Park position number. Please make note of that position number as it will be required to retrieve the parked call. Note, if the receptionist console is enabled on your extension, the parked call will now be displayed within the parked calls area of the receptionist console. To retrieve a parked call, dial star 104 from any extension. You'll then be prompted to enter the parked call position number to retrieve the call. If a parked call is not retrieved within 45 seconds, the parked call will ring back to the extension that parked it and the call can be answered by clicking the green Answer icon, or reparked by clicking the red Reject icon. This will repeat every 45 seconds until the call is retrieved. To access your voicemails, click on the Voicemails tab. This page is broken into two separate areas. The first area is your voicemail window. This is where your voicemails are stored, usually by date in chronological order. 
The second area houses all the voicemail information and is found to the right of the voicemail window. This section will change depending on the selected voicemail message. To listen to a message, select the message in the voicemail window. The message information will now be displayed to the right. Click the Play button. Your message will now be played. To download the message as a .wav file, within the Information window, click the Download button. Proceed to save the file to your computer. To email a voicemail message to yourself, click the envelope icon and proceed to enter a valid email address. To delete multiple messages, or all messages, click the three dots, then click on any messages you wish to delete. You'll see the number of messages selected on the right. Now, click the trash can icon to delete the selected messages. The delete voicemails confirmation window will appear. Click delete to confirm the deletion of the selected messages. You can delete all messages by clicking the box next to select all, then click the trash icon to delete all and the delete voicemails confirmation window will appear. Click delete to confirm deletion of all messages. To send a text or SMS message, click on the SMS tab. This page is broken into two separate areas. The first area is your SMS text window. This is where your messages are stored usually by date, in chronological order, and recipient. The second area houses all the SMS text information and is found to the right of the SMS text window. This section will change depending on the selected SMS message. To send a new message, click on the New Message button. Enter the recipient's name or a number and click the green arrow icon. Proceed to enter your message within the Type Message Here field in the Information area and set the number you're sending as here. Press Enter when you're ready for your message to be sent. To delete an SMS message, click on the trash icon here. A verification box will appear to confirm your deletion. Click Delete. Your SMS message will now be deleted. If you have more than one SMS message you wish to delete, click the trash icon within your SMS text window. Select the message or messages you want to delete by checking the checkboxes next to each message. When finished, click Delete. A verification box will appear to confirm your deletion. Click Delete. Your SMS message will now be deleted. New messages will be indicated by a red, circled number with the SMS text window. To view the message, click on the appropriate SMS message. The information will now appear in the Info area under a new subheading. The new message indicator will disappear. To access your faxes, click on the Fax tab. This page is broken into two separate areas. The first area is your fax message window. This is where your recent, pending, and failed faxes are stored, usually by date, in chronological order, and recipient. The second area houses all the fax message information and is found to the right of the fax message window. This section will change depending on the selected fax message. To send a new message, click on the New Fax button. From the drop-down menu, select your Sending As number. Enter the recipient's name or number in the search field and select the recipients below. Click the Next button. If you wish to use a cover page, make sure the checkbox is checked and the information is placed correctly in the Cover Page Information fields. If you do not wish to use a cover page, please leave this box unchecked. Proceed to attach the document by clicking the Attach File button. Locate the file on your computer and click Open. Once uploaded, your data will appear here. Click Preview to view the message before sending it. Once you're satisfied with how it looks, click the Send button. Your fax will now be in pending status. If the fax is successful in transmission, you'll see it in the fax message window. To delete a fax message, click on the trash icon here. A verification box will appear to confirm your deletion. Click Delete. Your fax message will now be deleted. If you have more than one fax message you wish to delete, click the trash icon within your fax message window. Select the message or messages you want to delete by checking the checkboxes next to each message. When finished, click Delete. A verification box will appear to confirm your deletion. Click Delete. Your fax message will now be deleted. To access your contact directory, click on the Contacts tab. This page is broken into two separate areas. 
The first area being your contact list window, giving you access to the directory contact list and your contact list. The second area houses all the contact information and is found to the right of the contact list window. This section will change depending on the selected contact. You will first see your company's contacts. These numbers cannot be edited or deleted and are set through the administrative portal. However, you can still place calls, send messages, and start meeting by hovering over contacts and clicking the respective icon. To access your contacts, click on the My Contacts tab. You'll now be on your contact page where you can add and delete contacts. To add a new contact, click on the New Contact button. The Add Contact window appears. Insert the necessary information in the appropriate fields. When finished, click on the Save button. You should now see your contact listed in the My Contact table. Click on the contact within the contact list window. The contact information will now be displayed in the right-hand information area. To delete multiple contacts or all contacts, click the three dots. Then click on any contacts you wish to delete. You'll see the number of contacts selected on the right. Now click the trash can icon to delete the selected messages. The delete contacts confirmation window will appear. Click delete to confirm the deletion of the selected contacts. To import contacts, click on the import icon. An import contacts dialog box will appear. You can import your contacts from an outlook.csv file or by using the Vonage custom template found here. For this video, we'll be using the outlook.csv file. Click on the attach file button within the dialog box. Locate the .csv file in your computer and click open. Click the upload button when finished. Your uploaded contacts will now appear. To add a contact as a favorite, click on the star icon either here or within the contacts information screen. Once clicked, the star will be filled yellow, and you will now see that contact within your favorites list. To remove a user from favorites, click on the star icon again. You'll see it's removed when the star reverts to its outlined form. To access your team messages, click on the Team Messaging tab. This page is broken into two separate areas. The first area is your Team Messaging window. This is where your team messages are stored, usually by date, in chronological order and recipient. The second area houses all the team message information and is found to the right of the Team Messaging window. This section will change depending on the selected team message. To send a new team message, click on the New Message button. Enter the recipient's name and click the green arrow icon. Proceed to enter your message within the Type Message Here field in the Information area and set the number you're sending as here. Press Enter when you're ready for your message to be sent. To create a new group, click on the New Group icon. The New Group window will appear. Proceed to name the group chat. For this video, we'll call it Quarterly Meeting. Once complete, add recipients by selecting from the contact list. Once finished, click Create. You should now see your newly created group within the team messaging window. To send a new group team message, click on the group within the team messaging window. Proceed to enter your message within the Type Message Here field in the Information area and set the number you're sending as here. Press Enter when you're ready for your message to be sent. To delete an SMS message, click on the trash icon here. A verification box will appear to confirm your deletion. Click Delete. Your SMS message will now be deleted. If you have more than one SMS message you wish to delete, click the trash icon within your SMS text window. Select the message or messages you want to delete by checking the checkboxes next to each message. When finished, click Delete. A verification box will appear to confirm your deletion. Click Delete. Your SMS message will now be deleted. To access reports, click on the Reports tab. A new browser window will open. Here you have access to view reports based on your calls, titled My Calls, and Reports for Call Queues. On the My Calls report page, you have the option to select the time frame in which you view the statistics. These include Custom. You can set the start and end date as well as times and days of the week. Today, yesterday, last week, this month, and last month. After determining the period of time, a list will generate below. To view a report, click on the one you wish to view. 
A new window will appear with several charts and calling data. You also have the following options to use while on the reports page. You can download the report. By clicking here, you can download the current report you have customized either in a PDF or CSV file. You can determine the format once you click on the download button as a drop-down menu will appear. After the format is chosen, please save the file to your computer. Print the report. By clicking here, you can print the current report you're currently running. Email the report. By clicking here, you can email yourself or others the current report. When the window appears, enter a valid email address and a corresponding message if wanted. Once finished, click Send. An email with the report will be sent to the recipients. These items below are features that can be added to your Vonage business account. These include meetings, call dashboard, and receptionist console. To access meetings, click on the Meetings tab. This page is broken into two separate areas. The first area is your Meetings window. This is where your meetings are stored, usually by date, in chronological order. You can sort through these meetings by all meetings, ended meetings, or missed meetings. The second area houses all the meeting information, including the time and date, participants, and meeting messages. This is found to the right of the Meetings window. This section will change depending on the selected meeting. To create a new meeting, click on the New Meeting button. The New Meeting window appears. Proceed to select the meeting participants from the contact list below. Click Start Meeting. The Vonage Meetings window will appear with your current participants already in the meeting space. If you have outside guests joining, wait for them to enter before starting your meeting. Once your meeting is concluded, it will appear in your Meetings window. To change meeting views, locate the View icon above the participants window. Click the arrow for your viewing options. You can choose from the following. Dominant, current person speaking. Audience, current person speaking with participants in a column to the right. Gallery, all participants in full screen tile format. Once chosen, your view will switch automatically. You can also share your screen during an active meeting. From the menu, click on Screen Share from the bottom menu options. Proceed to choose whether you select your entire screen or a specific program. Once selected, click the Share button. Your screen or application screen will now be shared. As a host, you have the ability to record meetings that will be later sent to you via email for you to download and keep a record of. To start a recording while in a meeting, click on the record icon within the bottom menu options. You'll get a notification that the recording is in progress. When you wish to stop the recording, click the recording icon again. Your meeting will now stop and will be provided to you to watch again or download and send to another worker if needed. To view past meetings, click Meeting from the main navigation menu. On the Meeting page, select Recordings. Select the recording you want. All of the information about this meeting will be displayed on the right-hand side. You can also do the following. To download a recording, click on the Download icon. You can also delete a recording by clicking the Trash icon here. You can join the meeting in several ways, the first being by meeting ID. You'll join a meeting by first signing in to the desktop app. Proceed to click Meeting and then click Join. Next, enter the nine-digit meeting ID and proceed to click Join a meeting. You'll now be in the active meeting. You can also join a meeting by invitation. If doing by invitation, a pop-up screen displays when a contact or group invites you to join a meeting. Click the green icon to join or the red icon to decline. From here, click the camera button to enable or disable your webcam. Then click the mic button to enable or disable your microphone. Finally, you can join a meeting that is already in progress. To do this, sign in to the desktop app and proceed to click Meetings. Next, click the meeting identified as Ongoing Meeting. Finally, click the Join Meeting button. You'll now be part of the current active meeting.
To install the Vonage Meetings Google plugin, go to the Google Workplace Marketplace, found here. Click Install and follow the installation procedures that will appear on the screen. To use the Vonage Meetings plugin from Google Calendar, locate the date you wish to schedule a meeting. When the window appears, insert the event or meeting title. Proceed to select Event. Enter the invitees of this meeting or event. For additional attendees, separate email addresses by commas. Next, select the meeting type. You can either choose the Google default or choose the Vonage Meetings plugin that will generate all the information you need to successfully schedule a meeting. Choose Vonage Meetings. When complete, click Save. To access the Receptionist Console, click on the Receptionist Console tab. This page is broken into four distinct areas, including Calls, Contacts, Parked Calls, and Queues. The console will show the calls currently waiting to be answered with the following details, caller name and or number, status, duration of wait time. To answer an incoming call, click on the Answer icon. Your call will now show above the Call Console panel. To mute a call, while on the active call, press the Mute icon. The caller will no longer be able to hear. Reversely, to unmute the call, click the Mute button again. To transfer a call, click the Transfer icon. Select how you wish to transfer from the following. Blind transfer. A blind or unannounced transfer takes place when you transfer a call to someone else without announcing the call first. To conduct a blind transfer, while on an active call, click the Transfer button. Proceed to select Blind Transfer. From the Contact panel, select the recipient you wish to transfer to and click the Transfer button. Your call will now be transferred. You can also transfer a call by dragging the call and dropping it on its intended recipient. Attended Transfer. A consulted or announced transfer is performed when you announce the call to the recipient prior to transferring the call. To conduct an attended transfer, while on an active call, click the Transfer button. Proceed to select Attended Transfer. From the Contact panel, select the recipient you wish to transfer to and click the Call button. When the party answers, announce the call and click Transfer one last time. Your call will now be transferred. Transfer to Voicemail. A direct to voicemail transfer is performed when you wish to transfer a call directly to another user's voicemail. To conduct a transfer to voicemail, while on an active call, click the Transfer button. Proceed to select Transfer to Voicemail. From the Contact panel, select the recipient you wish to transfer to and click the Transfer button. Your call will now be transferred to their voicemail. To place a call on hold, while on the active call, press the Hold icon. The caller will now be placed on hold. Reversely, to resume the call, click the Hold button again. To park a call, while on an active call, click the Park icon. The call will now be shown in the Parked Calls console panel. To end a call, click the End icon. Your call will now be disconnected. To access your contact directory, click on the Contacts tab. This page is broken into two separate areas. The first area being your contact list window, giving you access to the directory contact list and your contact list. The second area houses all the contact information and is found to the right of the contact list window. This section will change depending on the selected contact. You will first see your company's contacts. These numbers cannot be edited or deleted and are set through the administrative portal. However, you can still place calls, send messages, and start meeting by hovering over contacts and clicking the respective icon. To access your contacts, click on the My Contacts tab. You'll now be on your contact page where you can add and delete contacts. To add a new contact, click on the New Contact button. The Add Contact window appears. Insert the necessary information in the appropriate fields. When finished, click on the Save button. You should now see your contact listed in the My Contact table. Click on the contact within the Contact List window. The contact information will now be displayed in the right-hand information area. To delete multiple contacts or all contacts, click the three dots. Then click on any contacts you wish to delete. You can delete all contacts by clicking the box next to Select All, then click the trash icon to delete all, and the Delete Contacts confirmation window will appear. Click Delete to confirm the deletion of all contacts.
To, to import, import contacts, contacts click, click on the Import, import icon. An Import, import Contacts dialog box will appear. You can, you can import your contacts from an Outlook.csv file or by using the Vonage custom template found here. For this video, we'll be using the Outlook.csv file. Click on the Attach File button within the dialog box. Locate the .csv file in your computer and click Open. Click the Upload button when finished. Your uploaded contacts will now appear. The console will show all the parked calls with the following details. Caller ID, parking number, time passed since the call was parked, and parked by which extension or user. If a call is parked, you can click Answer to unpark the call. Please note, when unparking a call, the caller ID on the active call will show up as star 104 star plus the number the call was parked at. The console will show all the queues available to take calls in the company with the following details, name of the queue, extension number of the queue, how many agents on a call, how many calls are waiting to be answered in the queue, how many agents are logged into the queue, and average wait time to all waiting calls. You may transfer to a specific queue while on an active call by clicking on the transfer icon within the queues panel. Once clicked, the call is transferred to this queue. You'll be able to see the call here. You can also drag and drop an active call to a specific queue. For example, we will drag the active call to the sales queue. When we release the call, it will now be transferred to this queue. If done correctly, you'll be able to see the call here. Thank you for viewing the Vonage Business Communications Desktop App Tutorial. To exit, click the Exit button.